So we're here on uh, the swing stand. I'm here with Daniel Turkas from Swing, and uh, he's going to tell us about uh, the new, new new products. Yeah. So you wanted to hear about the Senses, yeah. which um, is the brand new wing, also featuring the new design. Maybe here you can see it a bit better. And um, it is a mid ENB wing. It closes the gap between our low end ENB Arcus and our high end. ENB Mistral 7 mm -hmm. as we see the segment of ENB got bigger yeah. and also in our portfolio so we believe there is enough space even for three B gliders nowadays yeah right and um, so this is targeted for the classic weekend warrior that wants to go cross country but yeah. also just have fun flying improve his flying skills you know basically the wing teaching him also a little bit how to get better how to fly better yeah. you know that's why we also say it's going to be like your sixth sense you know right okay. and um, that's where it comes from so it is um, this is the target group you know for people that think oh high end B they got really high end nowadays you know and maybe it's a bit too much for me it's maybe yeah. a bit it's more dampened, for example, than the Mistral 7. You will yeah. still feel the air, but it will not feel as much as like, you know, a, the higher performance wings, which are typically less dampened, you know? Right, okay. You know, the Discus is a really nice, high-performing wing, which is, um, I think, there is no other A-wing in this like this kind of a wing you know it has 44 cells you know mm -hmm. it has mini ribs it is cross brace is really nice high performing a wing and um, the discos came out also because of the new requirements that flight schools have for sure in the german speaking market so mm -hmm. from now on you're only allowed to do lessons on a real pure a and a wing you okay. know and the Arcus is an ENA wing, unaccelerated, but accelerated, it's a B wing. So it's a really nice low B wing. You could say also it's a nice wing if you finished your lessons, you know, it's a low end B to go out there. Um, whilst the sense is for sure is a step higher, okay. you know. So, um, and I strongly believe that it's smart to push your limits and to pro progress slowly when you start paragliding, you know? Yeah. It takes a lot of time and you have to invest a lot of time to get a really good pilot. So if you step yeah. up too early, the wing will be flying with you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Sooner or later you get into a scary situation yeah. where you not master the wing anymore. Yeah. And then you probably maybe even could quit flying because you get too scared. So, you know, for the benefit of your fun flying yes. in the air and your safety, which is, I think, the most important when flying, you have to be safe, Yeah. you know? Well, I agree with you that our experience is that um, one of the biggest mistakes we see pilots making is always want to change up their wings too quick. Yeah. And sometimes they get away with it and, and sometimes it it puts them off the sport. So, yeah, I agree. You know, I um, I do lectures about cross-country flying and things, mm -hmm. and people often ask me, so, when is a good time for me to step up to the next wing? Mm -hmm. And I tell them, when you really master your wing, mm -hmm. and you are the pilot, you are in control of your wing, and then they go like, aha, and um, how do I know that I master my wing? Mm -hmm. And I go, okay, you're happy doing fully accelerated asymmetrical collapses, fully accelerated frontals. And um, you know the stall point of your wing, you can do a flyback. Mm -hmm. And you're capable of turning 180 degrees negative, you know, just for safety reasons to avoid a collision maybe. And the rest, what I mentioned before, that yeah. can happen to you cross-country flying. Yeah. And then they go, aha. And then I say, yeah, and that is really boring for you too. You know, doing all those maneuvers. Right. And you go, yeah. uh huh. <laughs> yeah. And then it's the right time to step up. Yeah. So reflect, think about it. Can you do all this? Yeah. If not, stay on the discus. Yeah. You know, you have the performance, you have the handling, mm -hmm. but you have additionally the passive safety to learn all those things in a yeah. safe environment, even over ground. Yeah. You know, and if that gets really boring, which will take for sure four years on an average pilot, yeah. then it's time for you to step up. And with a wing like the Discus, you have 
great performance and very nice handling anyway. So it's yeah. and, and it climbs really well. You're, you're not lacking anything really. So and high passive safety. Yeah. So and then if you flew and also it depends how much time you're willing to invest and how much time you can invest. You know, like but you should be uh, around 50 hours a year for a census type of wing. You know. Okay. Yeah flying regularly, you know. Yeah. Um, so for the census, you're not aiming it for new pilots? It's well, there might be new pilots that are really skilled and, you know, yeah. there are still pilots that yeah. progress yeah. fast, yeah. you know, because they come maybe from other extreme sports or they are good athletes, yeah. you, whatever. So for sure, yeah, there will always exceptions. be exceptions. Yeah. But in general, I personally, or we also would recommend to, you know, progress slowly, push your limits slowly, and choose your glider wisely. Don't get influenced by your friends, ah, oh, you're flying, you know, like, um, no, it changed. And we see it changing in Germany a lot, yeah. you know, also the perception in public, yeah. what is the right wing to fly. And at least in Germany, nobody is ashamed flying an ENA wing, you know, they yeah. say, look. Well, this is something that's changing in England and we'd like to see it change the same some more. With too many yeah. pilots are still changing quick, but I can see a change also happening. I hope it happens some more. Yeah, and um, this is, I think, also the reason why the Discus is such a bestseller, you know. Mm. Um, because you have the passive safety, but you have everything else you need, you know. It has the performance of a, of a competition wings not even yeah. a decade ago, you yeah. know. That's great. So. Well, that's great. Also, um, you also have the, um, the Sting 2. Yeah. A new paramotor wing. Features Can we tell also us a little bit about that? It features also the new design, just with an additional design element to uh, distinguish the free flying from the paramotor wings. Yeah. And, um, you know, the Sting 1 is probably being an evergreen and the most sold paramotor wing, f multi, we call it a little bit of a multi-tool, mm -hmm. because um, we don't know of many wings out there that are really good for paramotoring mm -hmm. and at the same time really good for free flying. Mm -hmm. So it is also based on the discus and um, we learned that um, it's very easy to get into flying, no matter what you want to do, if it's paramotoring or free flying, and many people are looking for just, they want to buy one wing. Yeah. Not one wing for paramotoring and not one wing for free wheel flying. Yeah. But then you have the challenge of how do you make it good for both and yeah. how do you get it certified for both. At least in Germany we have uh, the requirement that paramotor wings have also to be certified. And, um, and we put an additional trick on the Sting 2, right. which is that it grows with you. So um, it is ENA. Yeah. Uh, when you change this accelerator setup, which every pilot can do himself, right? Okay. It goes faster and better speed, and yeah. goes into EMB. Okay, well, that's a clever idea. Yeah. yeah. So even then, it, it lasts even longer, and you don't have to buy a new thing. Okay. Well, that's great. Thanks. Any other uh, any other new products? Yeah. Um, we have Come a new here. rescue. Okay. The orange cross. The orange Tell cross, exactly. It. Looks interesting. But it's not orange. <laughs> it's not orange. It's going to be a more orange. And I can tell you why it's called orange cross. Because um, we bought um, uh, the, a new production in Croatia mm -hmm. that um, was owned, or no, and it's called Krilo, and Krilo was owning the um, Team 5 rescues. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. So, um, so we got with all with this production, we also bought the rights on the Orange Cross. It was used to be the Team 5 Orange Cross. Uh, so, okay. we improved it a little bit. We made a lighter container there. So, it's something proven and well tested. We know from all the safety uh, SIVs okay. um, that it performs really nice, opens quickly, high pendulum stability and it doesn't glide compared to another uh, competitor, you know, so this is really a key advantage, I think, there. Because if it opens the wrong way and you have backwind and it glides, oh, you go fast. Hit you hit a wall. Yeah. So why is this, what is the secret? Why does it not glide? Oh, you have to ask a designer, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> is it to do with the holes? On it the has, yes, for sure, it has to do with the, the holes. holes on, the, on the sides. Yes, yeah. on the sides and yeah. also the apex line. and. Um, 
Yeah. I'm not, I could tell you more about competition wings and designs of competition <laughs> wings. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. Okay. So, and I, I would like to tell you things I'm sure of and I know of and not yeah. okay. be rumoring, you know. But, um, of course, we're working on the Core 4. Yeah. And the target has to be on the Core 4. It has to be, you know, equal or the best performing wing. Otherwise, there is no reason to sell it. Yeah. And um, so, yes, we are working on it. We had a little bit of other priorities, like the census, for example, that were higher priority. Yeah. Um, yeah but I need one. <laughs> and okay, um, knocks it up the priority. <laughs> you said you can fly the discus. It's got the same performance as a competition wing. <laughs> as a competition wing 10 years ago. You know, <laughs> uh, of course, the competition wing is different performance, you know, uh, than the discus, yeah. and um, also than all the other um, range of yeah. the wing, you know. So, um, but we, uh, there are some interesting spin-offs and learnings, mastering this two-liner technology, which mm -hmm. we will put into the Astral Eight. Uh, okay. Which is also due for okay, it's a bit early, but for next season. Ooh, the Astral Eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, and it looks really promising too. Okay. And uh, speed riding, we mm -hmm. also will be launching a Spitfire too. Like uh, I okay. will mark it. The Spitfire has been going for quite a while, been very successful. And very successful, and I think uh, everyone knows that most probably we're market leader, European globally probably too. Mm -hmm. If you look at the videos, it's all about Mirage and Spitfires. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the Mirage uh, is um, the one with the biggest range, and we translate it into the Spitfire 2, but just more steeper, so it's going to be more the riding machine. Okay. You know? Um, What's well, the Mirage? Much in England. I know. <laughs> <laughs> For you guys, it's the Mirage. You know, but a lot of English pilots go on holiday. Yeah. And do yeah. But high wind. Speed soaring, you know, like yeah. um, with the Mirage 13 and a half, it's not so difficult, super stable, you know, like you go flying when the others pack their gliders with this one, you know, so uh, harnesses, the reverse Evo. So yeah. I think we have a really nice, basically in everything, like rescue, harness, paraglider, motor glider, speed rider, we have really exciting, awesome new products yeah. coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thanks, Daniel. It's been great well, talking to you. Thanks for all the inside yes. information. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Daniel.